This is Gabe from Bimmerfile, and we are back. It's been a long hiatus um, from podcasting or anything along those lines, um, as we've just been focused on writing, uh, writing reviews, etc. But we're back with something pretty cool. We sat down, actually, we sort of stood and walked around with Marcus Searing, who is an old friend of, of ours, uh, and, and frankly, mine, going back to his many days about 10, 15 years ago. Marcus was head of exterior design for many, for many years, and then made the transition to head of Rolls Royce design, where he oversaw uh, a number of the current products currently on market. From there, he made a jump back to BMW M, and that's where things get pretty interesting. Marcus actually designed the E46 M3 um, for what it's worth. I mean, the, the parts that were M, of course, and he penned the very controversial at the time Z3 M Coupe, among other things. So he was somebody who was definitely uh, not uh, afraid of doing something slightly different, we'll say. He also created the Mini Coupe and uh, Mini Roadster, and has has really seen, I'd say, has been responsible for many of the most, um, at first, sort of difficult designs to to wrap your head around from BMW and many and any roles. Um, but ultimately, those are products that now are, are looked upon as, um, you know, in a way, uh, mythical. Um, you know, they have either foretold trends that were coming or have been continued to be quite unique. So where does that leave us? It's now on Marcus's plate to lead all of BMW M design. And that starts with perhaps the most controversial of all BMW M products ever created. And I say that even knowing that there was quite a lot of controversy around, of course, the one, I'm sorry, the X5M and the X6M. But this is something in maybe even, I would say entirely different in a sense. This is the first bespoke M product since the M1, the original supercar that kicked off the brand. And as many of you listening, as many of you watching on, on YouTube would know, there's been a lot of rumors around a bespoke M product for many years, and most of those rumors centered around a supercar. That is not what has happened. In fact, what has happened is the exact opposite. We are seeing M enter a, a market segment that they have in the past that they never would, which is a large crossover, large SUV, if you will. This is a product that is based on the X7. It is uh, not dramatically larger than the X5 um, to all in, but it is larger. And it, in a lot of ways, of course, it goes against the origins of the brand, as, as many will say. We're not so sure. Um, this is a product that, well, we're going to roll the tape here and we're going to talk to Marcus about it and uh, and we'll come back. But I think the key thing for us and, and I think for those listening is this is a product that really doesn't quite make sense until you see it in the flesh. And once you do, it is unlike anything we've ever seen from M. In fact, it's unlike anything we've ever seen from BMW, knowing that what you see will be almost entirely production ready. So it is my great pleasure to... Uh, to hand it over to Marcus. Uh, we spent a about 20 minutes walking around the XM at the Grove, which is a, a BMW event space in Los Angeles. And of course we recorded this before its debut. So uh, no photos, no video, nothing of the sort could be, uh, could be recorded at that time. Um, but of course I was lucky enough to have my iPhone. So we were, this is, of course, off the cuff. Uh, we were able to record, audio record, Marcus walking us through this car. So the sound quality isn't the best. I apologize ahead of time, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure the content, hopefully the content, will make up for that sound quality. Enjoy. Okay, so we love you, M. As we, as we say, the, the most powerful lecker in the world <laughs> um, is turning 50 years next year. Um, was founded in 1972 um, as a BMW Motorsport company, which was in charge of all the motorsports at BMW. And the first vehicle which came to the market was the legendary M1 in the late 70s. So, um, and of course, uh, BMW M is developing uh, further and further. And, uh, we thought it would be not only because 50 years of BMW, but it would have been 
time to uh, show uh, the world another stunning uh, car, which is this car. It's a concept car right now. Um, Marcus will uh, tell you that the car will be or is going into production um, like uh, end of next year. But um, yeah, we are very proud that to, sh to show the car here. Um, it is the first electrified BMW M high performance model. BMW entered, BMW M entered the um, electrification uh, at the performance models already with the BMW i4 M50 mm -hmm. or the BMW iX M60, which um, which will um, um, debut um, on in January. But this is a totally different story. So that's a high performance car, and I would say we we show you the car right now, um, and then can talk about the design and what yes. from the design comes into series production. We can talk about some facts and figures and yeah. Yes. Yeah, with this, uh, we had a chat with, before yeah. with, with that car, we, we want to, to enter that segment of the expressive uh, luxury. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, BMW is, is growing, it's getting stronger in the um, luxury class mm -hmm. more and more. So mm -hmm. the traditional 7 series, but also the X7 is doing fine. Mm -hmm. and then for sure we have the 8 series, but also the 8 series Grand Coupé. And when you look at the M8 uh, Grand Coupé first edition, this is also already expressive lifestyle mm -hmm. a bit. But we want to have even more access to, to that group. And mm -hmm. uh, when you com compare a, a regular BMW like a 3 series, you have the Audi A4, you have the C-Class, and so mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a quite clear field of competitors. But if you look to that segment of the extroverted wealthy or extroverted uh, mm -hmm. luxury, they are not so, um, uh, it's not so unique. Yeah. You know, mostly you have super sports cars, uh, mid-engined, uh, stuff like that. And uh, then you find a uh, Lamborghini Urus, for example, mm -hmm. or a Daimler G-Wagon. Mm -hmm. And um, a BMW board said, okay, we want to enter that segment coming from our luxurious cars like mm -hmm. 7 Series and X X7. And they said to us, really, surprise us, shock us. They said, sorry. <laughs> yeah, do something unexpected. And then we said, great, this is a carte blanche for us. That's amazing. This is amazing. And uh, so we started with all studios. Uh, BM BMW is running Munich, LA, mm -hmm. and uh, Shanghai for a sketch uh, competition. And then we built several uh, models, full-size uh, models in, in, in Munich. And this <coughs> is, a, is a design model out of the process. You know, an automotive industry often showcase for pre-communication uh, are built after the production model is finished. Mm. You know, and here uh, this this model is out of our process, and the and, and inside that process, when the boards looked at that model, they said, "This is it. Do it." And then it's we say here it's nearly ninety percent. What you're seeing here is eighty, ninety percent mm -hmm. is real already. I said, drag that through, make it feasible. Wow. So, so what I'm seeing here is something that's more bold, perhaps. Yeah, it's, and, 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 uh, and, and, some, uh, and, and in some areas, we, we, for sure, we have here the license mm -hmm. plate under, under tinted glass, you know. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is always a chance for us in, in design on a, on a show yeah. car or to do something which is not, uh, not allowed legally, mm -hmm. but, but uh, we are not fans of the European big license. Yeah, in the, I can understand in, that. In the front. And this is only a little, little, little detail. And um, when we it? want to, to enter that segment, for sure we have to have a new, radical and unique offer. Mm -hmm. And we, we are saying, we have a saying in, 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 in design, obviously, a uh, good design starts with good proportions. And so what you're seeing here is a long wheelbase. Mm -hmm. This is always good for good proportions. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite similar to the X7. And we have big 23-inch wheels. And um, that m model here, this design is made of, of contrasts mm -hmm. to create a certain kind of tension. 
Mm -hmm. Even in this little detail, you can see they are designed in a very rugged way, mm -hmm. but also in a luxurious and elegant way. Mm -hmm. So it's not simply turned, it's also milled and then painted with this gold, bronze, metallic, for example. Yeah, and the, and the, and the dish of these wheels as well. Oh, that's a, that's a Rolls Royce truck, huh? Yeah. <laughs> by, by accident. So the mirror, uh, the, uh, the center cap is always, is always right side up. And it's and it and it's BMW, not the Roundel. What's the concept there? What's yeah? It's 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 really this uh, high-end fashion labeling. You also can see that here uh, how the black belt uh, ends. You yeah. also have uh, made a de design later on, even even more the production model and engraved XM logo like like uh, yeah. It's more XM than it's uh, BMW. Did you notice that there is no BMW classic logo on the back of the car? I saw it on the on the top. Yeah, so that's kind of a reminiscence on the of the F1 and on the M1, right? Yep. And this one is melted in the glass. It's not a sticker or something like that. And this will also come into production. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. The the uh, you know, so there's so much drama happening at the yeah. back of this car. Um, the, the graphic for the rear lights is unlike anything I've ever seen, and it is. What's interesting to me is it it's it's expressing motion in a lot of ways, um, but it's also you know it works so well with the tapering, or at least it appears in my eyes to be tapering down from from the top. It's just unlike anything I've ever seen. Yeah, this is what they wanted, to, uh, what they ordered, you know, yeah. <laughs> to surprise us. And um, yeah, and, and when you see, when we have uh, long wheelbase mm -hmm. uh, wheels, uh, uh, very short front overhang, typical for uh, BMW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a long stretch bonnet, and uh, dynamically declining roof line, and uh, this is held by a robust D post. And this sits on a very uh, powerful rear end. And also, uh, this car has lots of details when you look mm -hmm. at the uh, window finisher. Mm -hmm. It's a new uh, interpretation of the uh, Hofmeister key. Mm -hmm. I was and, gonna ask about that. Yeah, and it's not uh, continuing here on the door upper. Mm -hmm. It's continuing in, uh, in the black belt is, on the door upper. Is this part of a final yeah. design, should yeah. we expect to see that? That's really interesting. Yeah. And it's also supporting the dynamic wedge shape silhouette mm -hmm. from the side, so this gives extra speed. So, uh, as what, I really like, what I really like is that it's, it looks like chopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a bad gangster. Yeah. yeah, it does, it does look like, a, you're <laughs> yeah. totally right. It looks like a, a chopped uh, hot rod. <laughs> I think from we've seen X7s now for a few years, and, and obviously this is a car that has some some basis in an X7, but it looks utterly like different yeah. in, in every it's way. It's an animal of its own. It really, it really is, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not just saying that since I'm because I'm around you. You do. It, it really does look entirely different. Now I'm curious about the lights because this is we see this oftentimes. A concept car will have lighting up front that is not in any way possible. To, to go into production. Is that, is this what I should yeah. expect? Yeah, and it's... You gotta take a look here, yeah. because ah. um, there's the high and the low beam. So this is only the day running light. That's why it can be so slim. Wow, so behind the what looks to be darkened glass or plastic, yeah. we actually see the high and low beam. And then we have the daytime running lamps up top, giving that classic four-eye BMW. Look, yeah, wow. com it's all compromised, and um, here on, on the first glance, it's unmistakable a BMW, yet totally new. And uh, the BMW face is made of a combination of kidney and uh, headlights. Mm -hmm. And here we say, that, okay, well, it's a V8, and it needs loads of uh, air, and it, it should express power. Mm -hmm. So we uh, put uh, the kidneys. Big, but horizontally, not big and vertically. So, and and when you have a certain distance between daytime running light and elements in the kidney, it's legal. So, uh -huh. when uh, we have for the first time a full contour 
uh, in, uh, enlightened uh, kidney, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, so also when you are driving. It's not only when the car is standing you're, or you're approaching the really? car. It really is a daytime driving light. And um, the kidney is the most important uh, icon yeah. in, of BMW because these double headlights, other brands also using mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it, we can't use that as you, a differentiator as much as it could in the past. You read my mind because I was going to ask that question. Are you trying to leverage this, this icon yeah. In, in, in a way that's only possible from, from BMW. I think that's really this interesting. This was an experience from my uh, former days in Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. Some of, of, of uh, the English colleagues said um, uh, the customers are buying the front grill and five meter car in addition. <laughs> you no, know, this is what, what we, are, we are selling stories yeah. you know, in, in, and, and in experience, and especially in, 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 in M. It, it's, it's, it's more what you need, and this is the expression of uh, luxury. Wow. This, is, this is really stunning. And uh, I'll be honest, I saw the, the light up underneath the tarp, mm -hmm. and I wasn't entirely sure. Uh, again, being very honest, and now, I mean, seeing the form around it, um, you know, just the, 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 the way that the, you know, the, the bumper wraps around here, and then the, this shape in particular is so strong and kind of broad, it's, it, it really works. And here again, you, you see that, that um, the, the combination of uh, M power, mm -hmm. the big wheels, and the X DNA, also with the square cutted wheel arches. Yeah. This looks quite rugged, and the black band wrapping all around the car was the claddings on the. It also the it's got a little hint of M1 in mm -hmm. terms of the wedge shape. Yeah. yeah. Which is really interesting. I hadn't noticed that until just and, now. And we also have smuggled into the production car other little hints for experts to, uh, to uh, like to the find logos, for example, yeah. in the rear. Yeah. And, uh, this is in the interior. No, I think we should uh, we should see that. Yeah. I see door handles are obviously integrated here integrated. As, as, as well. And um, the working title for the whole wow. model uh, was the Rockstar. And uh, we say here, this is front stage. Mm -hmm. We have a clear driver orientation representing M power. And then all details like steering wheel, curve display, center console, gear shifter, they are all ergonomically in reach. And all little details like on the steering wheel, the red accent, or even mm -hmm. in the center uh, console, you see these three items. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, angle of the M logo and they mm -hmm. have little blue, dark blue, red frames mm -hmm. around each other and the curved display you can see here is working this in, in, for you as a mm -hmm. um, app designer yeah. or interface designer it's important. It's, it's very bold, it's two dimensional, it we, are, we are not trying to create any three dimensional depth we said okay we make it bold 2D using M colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will really go into production in that way. Wow. And That's it's all stunning. embedded in this CFK uh, finisher, mm -hmm. framed by the metal finisher. And here you also can see the combination of motorsport and luxury. Mm -hmm. It's a CFK with an interwoven copper thread. Yeah, that's really interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. And, uh, and when you look at uh, high fashion handbags, and so you find uh, items like, mm -hmm. like that, but this mm -hmm. is the, the, the combination again of M and uh, luxurious materials. And am I seeing this correctly? Is that navy blue? Is that? Uh, this is a petrol. Petrol, petrol. okay. This is cold and uh, a bit darker, mm -hmm. also in contrast to the brown vintage leather. Mm -hmm. And the brown vintage leather we will see in the production model as well. Because it was so um, convincing we say okay this we have to do exclusively for mm -hmm. that model as well and even the the sort of the textile or the yeah the, the, it's the woven form, yeah the woven mats are beautiful now so talking about the petrol and um, look here you try to look into the, into the rear because oh. then you get the whole story there we are okay so this is this is then backstage you know stunning. front stage uh, driver action mm -hmm. oriented and then after that, that uh, uh, it's large like atmosphere, mm -hmm. and um, the, the, the star for sure is that rear bench. 
continuing in the in the, in the door finisher. So it's a it's a it's a rear, it's a rear bench. So it is a extra you know there's extra leg room. The, yeah, the concept is, is this is and it's soft. It's very soft when mm -hmm. you sit. Leg room is gigantic. And it's incredible. It's not, it's not a rear bench that we that we're used to because it's really like a lounge. So mm -hmm. you can so you can also sit kind of like. Sideways, mm -hmm. crossing your legs, talking mm -hmm. to each other. And now is this concept, is this also a production the, oriented? Uh, the three dimensionality of that, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the materials are different. Mm -hmm. but, but we have a rear bench, we don't have a, a, a single seat. Oh, so, so no captain's chairs, as we, as we no, call them. No, uh, yeah. no, no, it's, it's really that rear bench. And, mm -hmm. and also on the production model, it will be extra soft. Ah. Uh. So, and it's, it's really, again, the two worlds in M. When you look at the M5 CS, mm -hmm. there we uh, transplanted the CFK front seats. Yeah. Shaped also into two single rail yeah, seats. Yeah, I call that the quad buckets. Yeah. <laughs> and here it's the completely different. Here this is really this yeah. uh, relaxation, uh, lounge-like atmosphere. And when you sit then, uh, we have ex extra leg space. Mm -hmm. But we have measured... Um, the, the, the height head clearance yeah. for a very tall guy so that it's comfortable and wow. uh, and the and the a posts maybe you have seen that in the front they are mm -hmm. not tilted in they are very vertically and this gives you then from the side glass extra clearance mm. uh, from the from the side and this is also supporting the presence of the car the so that's side. what's so interesting this is the first m bespoke product in a long time, right? Is that the, the concept? And so you've been able to change things um, a little bit? N not from my experience and level. Okay. I know from <laughs> Rolls Royce, so, and, and this, because this is the maximum, yeah. so sure, I'm, sure. I'm always continuously disappointed. No, you're, well, you're, you're, yes, <laughs> and when you're also a designer, so you're always pushing. Yes, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, this is. I, we, um, I had a chat with uh, Domagoy the other day, mm -hmm. and we we said we have to go away from getting targets and and goals. Mm -hmm. We have to set the targets mm -hmm. in design. You know, mm -hmm. in design you have to be more the st uh, strategic um, uh, goal setter mm -hmm. instead of getting targets. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a briefing from the board like like that, then you can really define it. Mm -hmm. you know, then you have something you really can work with, mm -hmm. and then you are able to create well, specific things. And ultimately, you're creating something that's more emotional, something that yeah. customers will react to and react to in an emotional way. Absolutely. And here, we believe this is um, no one won't have an opinion about that. Yeah. Yeah. So you did recognize the ceiling, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe you will ask if this comes into zero. Production. That was, yes. The answer is yes. Really? And even better than we have done it here. Uh, that's unreal. So it's a, it's a sort of a dimensional, it's a, it's a, it's like a 3D sculpture. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very sort of fractal in its design. Yeah, it's a prism structure. It's like an abstract piece of art. It's gorgeous. And lighted uh, indirectly from the side and mm -hmm. you can switch the lights. Yeah. And in, in the production oh, wow. car, we have more lights. Marcus, he has prepared only three colors in, 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 in the moment. But more as possible, and we decided actively not to go for a sun or a glass roof, because we want to have that cozy atmosphere mm -hmm. of a of a lounge. You know, in mm -hmm. Rolls Royce, you have that uh, privacy from the big mm -hmm. posts, mm -hmm. and uh, here we said, okay, we want to have that cocooning, mm -hmm. this relaxed uh, lounge atmosphere, not an old school cigar lounge atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, but this is, is a very uh, uh, modern thing, like in, in cool clubs. Yeah, this is fantastic. And this is an ad, you're you're so much in design, and this is an added value simply by design that roof, because mm -hmm. all cars have a, a headline. Yeah, yeah. And indirect lightning is also not so uh, there, yeah. a rocket rocket science. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. We've got uh, a headliner since hundred years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's funny that we now making a bit more use of that. When yeah. You sit in, in the back, you can enjoy that. Like. It's a canvas now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's really stunning. And I mean, it's not going to be to everybody's taste in terms of what I see in this production mm -hmm. or in this concept car, but I can imagine that in any different kind of shade, even just a dark, simple, like charcoal or black, 
uh, color and and with that lighting, it, it would be stunning. I also like the texture of it as well because mm -hmm. you get the light playing off the texture mm -hmm. creates a very like you said, it's a cozy environment. Um, really unexpected. This this is very unexpected. And so that answers the next question: is can you get uh, three rows in this car, which apparently is not on the table? No, no, no. We and and also we, we can't open the trunk on that uh, model, mm -hmm. but also it's not made for extra trunk space. Mm -hmm. We're expecting our customers uh, having that they will have more than that kind of household. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, yep. and it uh, it it has really fun to drive mm -hmm. and power. But it's also for longer distances. But mm -hmm. it's also for cruising, and you also can uh, transport some luggage. But it's it, the the volume for for the uh, luggage compartment. Mm -hmm. It's not completely optimized. Even for better looking, yeah. we left out some uh, liters of uh, volume in order to have a beautiful, That's really uh, cool. nice uh, rear compartment. That's really cool. Putting in your Exclusive well, yeah. bags and suitcases. So, you're, are you prepared for the uh, for the reaction to this car? I mean, I think it's sure. wonderful. But I mean, it, anytime you produce a, a, a an in product that's an SUV that's yeah. different. Yeah, for sure. You know, I you mean, know, it's and most people are expecting a super flat, super sports car with a mid, mid engine, mm -hmm. but. Um, BMW M especially has been always famous to reintegrate some mm -hmm. new styles, mm -hmm. and of course the, the SUV segment is the by far most yeah. highest growing segment mm -hmm. in the world. Um, so I think or we think um, that this is also a new kind of uh, yeah, experience mm -hmm. experience and to send out a message. Yeah. Lamborghini Euros, the Ferrari comes up with yeah. SUV. So the SUVs are ready for for extroverted SUVs. So the reason I ask, and this we can, and this will be my last question, because I know you, you you're busy busy people with a very busy product. But no, but for you, you always got time. I appreciate that, Marcus. <laughs> but I, the reason I ask, Marcus, is because you already pinned and and brought to market what was at the time probably the most controversial BMW, which was the M Coupe, the Z3 M Coupe. Mm -hmm. And I look at that car, and it's obviously quite different than this car, but I look at that car and I think it was it was reviled at the time by many people, not everybody. And now it's looked at as an icon, mm -hmm. as something that has become a legend in a sense. And so that's got to give you some confidence in, in that the fact that you and your team really know know what's right. Know how to solve this problem. Yeah, it you has know, to we be. Have, we have been through this discussion. I mean, when we when we first launched the BMW X5, mm -hmm. BMW wasn't in that segment, and we got some critics why BMW, which is known since almost a hundred years for this sports sedans, now moving up into the SUV segment. And um, that was the first one. The second one was the BMW X6. People were yeah. laughing at us and saying, wow, how, how, how in the world can you come up with an X6? The X6 was again a founder of a new segment. So, and we think that, um, that this car will also have a, a pretty good um, message to send out. Mm -hmm. now, I strongly believe in unique um, um, designs. Mm -hmm. So that that it's not so much comparable, you know. When you when you have something you're only getting from BMW or from 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 M, then it, then it's it's so unique and mm -hmm. people uh, can identify with it much more than if it's uh, too close to other makes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the 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 more defined and the stronger the character is of, of a product from my point of view the better it is mm -hmm. otherwise and for, for me it's wasted wasted, uh, wasted energy space, and yeah. time <laughs> we are well aware that we don't expect people to move from an m3 m4 m2 or whatsoever mm -hmm. into this car this product, yeah. but we keep on producing exactly. m2s and m4s yeah. yeah. so exactly. where's the problem yeah right right, <laughs> right. Customers out there sitting now in a G wagon or in a Urus, they say maybe there's some some something 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 more different or more something more special on the market. Mm -hmm. So it's not the it's not the M3, M4, M2 mm -hmm. owners we are aiming mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you both. This is 
they will, give you, they will give you. They will give. They will give us a hard time. They, yeah. The, 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 the diehard M3 driver will give yeah. us a hard time in communications for sure. Yeah. We are prepared for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and I think just assuring them that you won't take their M3 away from them. No, exactly. <laughs> then, we don't know. You know, it's, and, and we have the possibility always to to have very. Uh, hardcore special editions mm -hmm. of, of the M, like CS mm -hmm. and CSL mm -hmm. and all that that stuff. Yeah. The, uh, and I am fans. The fun fact is um, that when this car comes out next year, um, the all new M2 is coming out as well. So we can. We can teach them <laughs> with an all new M2. Perfect. Yeah, our book Tanks, ends, you know. We yeah. Are telling them, hey, we have this one for you, um, but we still have the. We haven't forgotten you. Yeah. Exactly. We still have the stick shift M2. That's fantastic. You. Well, again, thank you for your time. I appreciate so it. This is yeah, an amazing a, stick beat. It was a pleasure to, yeah. to you again. Yeah, absolutely. And from design to design. It's, yeah. Uh, it's a nice. I appreciate that, Marcus. Yeah, this is great. Thanks so much to Marcus Searing, head of BMW M Design. As you can tell, um, he and I go way back from uh, experiences that he's had at many, as well as BMW. And um, he is, a, as you probably could pick up, a very genuine human being, um, very, very thoughtful as a designer, very humble, uh, and also very honest, sometimes to a fault. He's, he's, he's amazing, and the work that he's done speaks for itself. The XM is not something that I suspect most people will love at first glance. It's challenging when you first see it, but it is different. It is bold, and that, that word is so overused, but it is bold. Um, it is daring, and that word is again overused, but it is. And, and what they've done is really impressive, and this is coming from somebody who's got manual transmission BMWs in the garage right now. This is... This is not what I would wake up and lust after typically, um, but in, in person, um, it's impressive. And for the market it's intended to sell to, I think they have knocked it out of the park. Um, looking forward to seeing some of the technology trickle down from the hybrid perspective. I mean, of course, there's no information on that right now, but it's coming. This is going to be a beast uh, from, a, from a power perspective as well. You know, is it going to be as, as nimble and... Uh, is it going to transmit everything you want through the steering wheel? Is it going to be light? No, no, that's not what this car is about. But what this car is intended to do, for what it's intended to do, it, it just nails it. Um, so can't wait for everybody listening and, and watching to see it in person. It is something to behold. And again, appreciate you sticking with us. The sound quality wasn't ideal. As you could tell, this is a sort of an off-the-cuff conversation that uh, really was just from you know two friends uh, talking over a car. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. And I think it hopefully it comes through in the recording because it was fun. It was fun to, to, uh, to walk around something that clearly Marcus was so passionate about. So again, thanks to Marcus Searing and BMW M for giving me the opportunity. It was a thrill. And uh, go in, uh, and see it. It's going to be making the rounds of various shows and, of course, ultimately in production late next year and hitting dealerships probably Q1 of 2023.